Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Anadonia. How the hell are you? I am doing pretty gosh darn good. Well, I was until I opened my mouth and took the first couple of words out of them and uh, made me sound like a complete idiot. But that aside, welcome back to Anadonia. Like I said, welcome back to Outcast Studios. Today, we're doing some more work on the Void Miner. So, like I mentioned, in between episodes, I've been AFKing in the area for this thing to start collecting up all of the, uh crystals that it sort of outputs now that we've got the flash memory crystal miner in here uh, I even did a cool little platform just around the edge just so I had something to stand on instead of having to fly around in here all the time but yes so while I've been AFK we obviously were able to get enough crystals for me to start well I guess finish even putting together the next tier of void miner as you can see we now have the erodium uh, structure frames and void miner the rest of this the again the erodium structure frames the rest of this is still just your regular stuff you got your null modifiers your laser core and your structure panel I went with the null modifiers again because I could just pull them out of the uh, of the EMC tablet and also because I'm pretty sure at this stage we still can't really make any of the other modifiers then again we do have quite a bit of Lonsdalite from uh, the miner. In fact, in the time that it's taken for me to build all of this, I'm pretty sure we should have had a little more come through. Yeah, we've had six more Lonsdalite come through. And if we combine that with what we've already got inside of the wireless terminal, I, yeah, you know what? We've actually got enough for some modifiers. Hang on. Slot that right back in alongside those structure frames there. We should have everything we need now for the tier 2 erodium void miner. So what we're going to do, let's just quickly dismantle this and then put in our replacement. Let's let's do it. Good. Let's do it. Okay, let's go. How interesting. Breaking the power block has uh crashed the game. Great. I'm so glad that in the year of our lord 2024 we still have Issues like this in modded Minecraft. I love that. Okay, let's let's restart the game. Let's break these. There we go. And to avoid confusion later, let's just drop all of this stuff into the wireless terminal. Let's get rid of the miner and then let's replace it with the new one. Uh oh, I don't remember which one of these is the correct one. What if I do preview? Oh, it's bigger. That's the correct one, but it's too low down. That's interesting. So what if I just, uh, how do I unpreview that? That looks right, I think. Well, we'll soon find out either way. So now if I click on uh, break and then build multi-block, it should do this for me. Brilliant. And it missed none of the blocks. There was no error in chat. You love to see it. And it left me with my modifiers. So, uh, I'm guessing the modifiers go here, 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 and here. But it's not actually letting me place them there, which means that I'm probably wrong. Hang on, let me... Give me back my night vision. I'm gonna assume I have to put the laser lens in there, like that. I suppose my main question is why is it not letting me place these blocks down? So what if I put my item output here? Oh, oh, that's interesting. It let me put the item output down. So if I put those there, I should have a third item output somewhere, right? If I plug the FE input in here, Where's my other item output? That's really odd. Where the hell did that go? Oh, wait a second. No, was one of them just a null IO block? It might have been. Let me go get my null IO block. Yeah, so if I drop the null IO there, because we don't need anything there, maybe it'll let me put my framed structure blocks in here. There we go. Place them in. That should complete the structure. And there we have it. It is online, and oh, you will love to see it. Now, checking the inside of this thing, the duration has gone down to 676. I'm guessing that means ticks. Um, specifically because of the frequency modifiers. Hopefully, the energy output or uh, energy input slash output is still balanced well. It does appear to still have a constant stream of power going in, which is good, since the tick cost has gone up from the looks of it. But check this out. So, with the next tier upgraded, 
for the Erodium Void Miner, we now have access to Chironite Crystals, which are Tier 3, as well as Lonsdalite Crystals still, which is a really, really small percentage chance. Uh, but yeah, we now have access to the Chironite level of Crystal, which means once we get enough of these, we can upgrade to the Tier 3 Void Miner, which is going to be absolutely brilliant. I do want to check on the chest down here just to see how quickly the frequency modifiers have affected this thing. That's where the item output went. That's interesting. To be completely honest, I don't know how fast this works. I know it said 6-whatever on the block, but it doesn't specify what unit of time that is. If it's seconds, if it's ticks, if it's minutes, God forbid it's minutes. But since it's directly over the item output, all we've got to do now is wait. But you know me, I am not good at waiting. So what I'm going to do while I, unfortunately, wait, I figure it's time to move on to the next weapon that we're going to be getting for our good old friend, our Ruby. So if you cast your minds back to the last episode, we made two entire sets of unobtainium armor. This is the strongest armor in this mod pack by far, but we only made armor. If we're going to kill the ender dragon, we're going to need weapons. So what I'm going to do is once again, I'm just going to scroll through any eye. I'm going to tick it over and I'm gonna try and find an extremely strong looking weapon. And then we're gonna see what it takes to make it. So I will be right back once I figured out just what that weapon is going to be. Now, obviously we have the obvious choice of an all the modium alloy blade, or if we wanted to go the full length, we could go with the Paxel and just merge everything together. But the issue with the all the modium alloy blade is it requires an unobtainium vibranium alloy. And while we do have the resources to make this, there is no recipe to make this. I, I wouldn't even know where to begin because there is no guide in the mod pack on how to get it. Even if I look into the quests themselves, look at this, unobtainium vibranium alloy. It doesn't tell you how to make it. Click to view recipes. There are no recipes. So I honestly just don't know what it wants from me here. I suppose another extremely powerful weapon would be the creative spell book, which would require a soul receptacle, three eyes of ender, three resonating gems, all of which we have access to, an archmage spell book, which again would be very easy, and an all the modium star. The only part of this that we can't get is the star, because it used to have a recipe, but it just doesn't anymore. The same thing happened to it, is what happened to the recipe for glass. It just disappeared. You've got stuff like these bands here, like the bands of Greater Mana and Aurora and Core Data and Dexterous Motion, stuff that would give us buffs as a player that you put on the Curios tabs, these stuffs, but they don't explain what they do. So I have no idea where to begin with them. Again, we've got the Ring of Thor and the Ring of Odin and the Ring of Loki, all of which sound like they could be really powerful, but they just don't say anything about what they do. These, however, the cyclic gems, these look like they could be useful. So what do we have here? Silkwe Silkweave slippers immune to fall damage. We already are. Okay, what do we have next? The dormant creeper spore immune to explosion damage. Interesting. We don't have that. Surprisingly, that is not something that is provided to us. Okay, let me write this down. Dormant creeper spore. Okay, what do we have next? The ethereal circlet immune to suffocation and elytra crash damage. Okay, so we're already immune to elytra crash damage, I believe. That's the unobtainium helmet but we are still able to be hurt by suffocation damage. So I'm going to write this one down to the ethereal circlet. Let me write this down. Next up is the alchemical veil, immune to ailments and effects. Now, I don't know if that means positive ones as well as negative ones, because it doesn't specify. We're already immune to wither, uh, we're resistant to magic, we're protected against levitation, immune to nausea, immune to fire and lava damage, and and we have infinite water breathing. That's That could be curious. I'm going to write it down as a potential one, but I want to check first because it might actually cancel out what we've already got. If it makes us immune to everything, 
every effect. It could mean that it makes it, it makes it possible for us to drown, which would be really interesting. The Alchemical Veil. Let's see, after that we've got Braces of the Titans. Critical hit damage is double that could be really useful, okay? Braces of the Titans. Arcane Relic. Magic damage taken is resist is decreased by 50%. We're already resistant to magic, so I would like... I, I don't know how I would test it, but I wonder if that would mean 100% magic damage would be taken away, or if it would be half and then halved again, so we'd only get 25% of all magic damage taken. Either way, I'm writing it down, Arcane Relic. Everlasting Rock Candy, immune to damage and death by starvation. Let's see, is that something we're already resistant to? No, we can still starve to death. So let's get that one, the Everlasting Rock Candy. Water Breathing Charm makes us immune to drowning, we already have that. The Speed Charm would give us more movement speed, so let's just, let's grab a Speed Charm, because I mean, we need it anyway. I wonder if that would stack with the speed boost we already get from the Evertide Amulet running on water. The Steel Rend Armlet of Resistance makes us completely immune to knockback. I'm pretty sure one one of the things we've already looked at does that for us already, doesn't it? Completely immune to knockback, where is that? Maybe I'm just blind, that could be really helpful, having no knockback. Steel Rend Armlet of Resistance. Then we have the Harlequin Ring of Luck, which increases player luck. I like the concept, I don't think we'll need it, it won't help us in the fight. Wind Force Gauntlets to help increase attack speed would be brilliant. Uh, and that looks to be it for the charms from Cyclic, so that's pretty cool. We've already got quite the a long list of buffs right there, which is very interesting, but I am going to still keep looking to see if we can find any more weapons. This is exactly what we're looking for in terms of power. 75 hearts of damage. The infinity hammer. I think it would be kind of funny if we nuked the ender dragon. So, what would it take to make an infinity hammer? Why is the tier so low? Oh, you have to charge it. I see. Okay. Gold gear, diamond axe, diamond sword, and an add-on range tier 12 with pink slime. We have all of this. What does it take to make the nuke? Ether gas. We have ether gas. Two nether stars. We have nether stars. We have all of this. Okay, I'm putting that on the list. In terms of actual weapons. <laughs> Oh, we need an infinity nuke, and we need an infinity hammer. Although I don't think I'm going to let Ruby anywhere near that nuke. I'm, I might not even put it down until we're in the end. Uh, but one thing that I have noticed, because I'm very smart like that, the, the amount of power in the object is what di dictates how much damage it does. In order for this to be the highest possible tier, we would need... 9 quintillion, 223 quadrillion, 372 trillion, 36 billion, 854 million, 775,807 RF. As well as a million millibuckets of biofuel. So that is probably going to be some of the last stuff we make. I'm gonna keep looking now. I suppose I could go the route of building a cleaver, because I remember from a long time ago that cleavers... Yeah, an all the modium cleaver would do 354 damage with each swing. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna write down all the modium cleaver, because we have all the modium to spare, and that does infinitely more damage than an infinity hammer with less energy in it. Actually, hang on, look at this. The unobtainium cleaver does even more damage. We're gonna get an, an unobtainium cleaver. And I think beyond that, there's not much else we can get that's gonna do any serious amount of damage. Don't get me wrong, there are probably things out there that can do a lot more damage, but going up against a fully stacked person who has all an obtainium, alongside the ability to fly, alongside a dormant creeper spore, an eternal circlet, an alchemical veil, the braces of the titans, an arcane relic, everlasting rock candy, a speed charm, a steel rent armlet of resistance, wind force gauntlets, an infinity nuke, by the way, which as a name, absolutely an infinity hammer and an unobtainium cleaver I, I i don't think i don't think there is anything we can throw at this dragon after that if it's not dead i will be so i think very quickly what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna 
I'm going to try and get through at least one or two of these charms. I'm going to try and make one or two of these charms before we finish off for today's session. Or I guess before I finish off for today, I can always just come back and finish the charms another time. I completely forgot I changed the way I do my recordings now. I can just come back tomorrow. Okay, so looking at the recipe, the dormant creeper spore is going to require lime concrete powder, which is a weird ingredient, but we can get it. Gunpowder. We legitimately have an infinite amount of it. Gold nuggets. The same terms and conditions apply. The issue, and it's the issue that has been biting me in the ass this whole time, is the crystallized amber. Because we've made this before, but it is a pain in the ass to make. Because it requires a fire charge, redstone dust, and a magma block alongside lava or honey. But now that I'm thinking about it, hang on a second, we have infinite lava and these all have an EMC value, why was this an issue to begin with? Let's make some amber. Uh, the other thing we need is the ender apple, which also has an EMC value. And this requires four honey apples, four ender pearls, and cocoa beans. Again, easy to make. The honey apple is just apple and honey. And honey, you get from honey bottles, and honey bottles you get from, I'm pretty sure, just right-clicking beehives. That, that, that is it. So let's get started. Oh, now that is very helpful. I was out looking for beehives because why the hell are they so rare? Uh, and I just found a fire charge in the portal, or a, uh, mm, what is meant to be a portal. But that, oh, I love that. Okay, brilliant. Right then, back to searching for beehives. Well, I found a beehive, but uh, it wouldn't let me take any of the honey from it by right-clicking with an empty glass bottle like you do in Minecraft, because that's exactly what the wiki says. But I did get my server to crash again. Great. Love that. Okay, so my time being crashed has actually taught me a very valuable thing about this mod. That being, I'm probably going to need two additional items if I want to make honey. The first one being a, a thing called a scraper, I believe? A, a scrapper? A scraper? Yeah, here we are. Uh, and that gives us honeycomb. And that's just three iron and two sticks, which we have plenty of. And while I probably could just pull a crafting bench out of the crafting terminal, we're in nature. Let's just make one. And with this scraper, I should be able to get honeycomb from this thing. There we go. Oh no, you're angry at me. The bumblebee's angry. Whatever will I do? Right, that gave us some dirty honeycomb. I don't know how to clean it. Maybe it's just as simple as dropping it in the water. It is not just as simple as dropping it in the water. Okay, let's head back to base where we can make the next thing that we need. Also, just look at that. Look at that arch off in the distance. That is so pretty. Right then, we're down in the machine room because the next thing that we need to make, I believe, is something called a centrifuge. Here we go, there's a manual one and a normal one. Uh, the manual one is uh, very manual, and the normal one is... Uh, requires beeswax, let's just get the normal one. So what do we need? We need a lever, a barrel, and two iron trap doors. Very easy. Okay, and there we go. Centrifuge, manual centrifuge. Let's just find a corner to stick this in. Here should do. And then let's put the dirty honeycomb and the glass bottle in here. I think that's how this works. Okay, that just gave us dirt. Maybe I'm missing something here. Ah, right. So it only has a percentage chance of giving us honey. Great, okay. Guess we've got to get more combs. Okay, that's a little better. So we used lumber essence this time and managed to grab ourselves two bottles of honey. We also just have some RGB honeycomb from an RGB nest that I harvested. So let's try this one. Or not, it won't let me for some reason. Why not? There we go. Nothing. Uh, beeswax, which is kind of nothing. And more beeswax. Okay. Okay, so looking at the recipe for crystalline amber, we're going to need honey in a solidification chamber, uh, either that or magma. Why did I go for honey again? Ah, right, yes, I need the honey to make honey apples to make ender apples. So if this is a honey block and an apple, and a honey block is for honey, and honey has an EMC value, I can just grab three more from here. Turn this into a honey block, take the honey block, put that into here as well, grab the honey block, and do we have any apples in here? 
is the real question. We have golden apples, we don't have regular apples, that's okay, we've got more than enough in here. We have seven. But an apple and a block of honey, and we got ourselves a honey apple, which is really good from the looks of it, especially for saturation. So let's throw this up here so that we have, again, an infinite amount of them. Let's grab two, simply because I actually want to eat one just to see what it does. Very nice, full saturation instantly. And then all we've got to do, once again, looking for the centri- no, the creeper gem thing. There we go, the dormant creeper spore. All we need now is some cocoa beans, which apparently we don't have. That's really interesting. Did, did we never grab cocoa beans? At all? In all of our adventures, did we never grab cocoa beans? That's really interesting. I guess we've got to go find some. You would not believe how hard it is to find regular default Minecraft biomes when you have biomes aplenty installed. This was such a ball ache of a trip, but jungle biome. Jungle biome means cocoa beans. Cocoa beans means that we can finish off this stage of uh, artifact making. Although I've actually got to find the cocoa beans first, so this should be interesting. Well, I went to go take a sh- When I came back, I was dead to a sky slime. Don't know how, considering I, I was flying when I left, but... Okay. Right then, everyone. Sorry about that, and I guess... Welcome back. So, uh, I had to end my recording the other day, simply because I was running out of time to film. Um, but, you know, the benefit of this new recording style is that doesn't matter because I can just pick it back up oh, whenever I want. But the one downside is that meant I did accidentally kind of craft the dormant creeper spore off camera. I, uh, I got all of the ingredients needed and I finished it. As you can see, uh, from the fact that I have two stacks of crystallized amber in my inventory, I made quite a bit. And as you can tell from the fact that there's two pieces missing instead of one, I also made the second one. The weird thing about it is, it says immune to explosion damage on right-click toggle. Or, I guess, on right-click toggle. But I can't toggle it. Right-clicking it does nothing. So I want to test that I'm actually immune to explosion damage. And to do that, I'm gonna grab some TNT. Just a piece. We only need a single piece, and then we need something to set it off with. So do we have a redstone torch? Yes, we do. Let's uh, go all the way over here so we don't destroy our lovely base. And then let's take this armor off. Uh, we have nothing else that should make us immune to explosion damage. Brilliant. Right then, let's see if this kills us. Nope, it didn't, which means we are completely immune to explosion damage as per the dormant creeper spore. But, oh, now that's interesting. It has durability. Oh, that's strange. Do we have the power to make an eternal stellar yet? Vibranium, expetrified, and stellarite. Vibranium and all the modium. I think we have the resources to make an eternal stellar. Now, having the first thing we use this on be a catalyzing creeper thing, a, a, a creeper spore, is a very big waste. But since it says it has three uses, I say we just use it as one of the three. You know, like the whole common sense thing would uh, tell you to. So let's make as many of these eternal stellars as we can. One, two, three. Four. We have enough for four before we run out of all the modium. That is pretty good. So, if each one of these has three uses, that's three, six, nine, twelve uses. That's enough for two sets of armor, my sword, and three other things. Two of which are probably going to be our um, catalyzing glands. I don't remember their name. But either way, Molten Iceborne, Blood-Seeking Netherite Sword with Vigilante 2 and Life Leech 2. Actually, you know what? Looking at our list of weapons, that's not worth putting it on. Do we have anything worth putting it on? Maybe our shovel? Would it even work on one of these? No, it wouldn't. I guess it'll have to be our armor then, if we just put it on here. But then again, this has got 800,000 durability. This has got 120... No! This has got 1,200,000. I don't think it needs it. Oh well indestructible anyway. It completely regenerated all of its damage. That was actually kind of cool to watch. Where did that go though? Remaining right-click uses. What does it mean right-click uses? I guess we didn't have enough for all of it after all, but the important part is that this armor is now completely indestructible. 
And it was the all the modium that we ran out of. Yeah, we still have a lot of vibranium. But as much as I would love to make more of that, it's not the goal right now. Once we have that cool mining thing set up and that starts delivering us uh, all the modium and an obtainium and vibranium, then we can focus on making all of the eternal stellars. But for now, our goal is still the list of weaponry. And with the dormant creeper spore ticked off, the next thing we have to make is the ethereal circlet. Now I had a look at the crafting recipe for this earlier. And the ethereal circlet is actually easier to craft because it doesn't require the crystallized amber It requires end crystals and believe it or not They're easier for us to make than the crystallized amber all we need are some eye of enders And we have an infinite supply of those in the basement. There we go and just like that one and two. Two ethereal circlets, immune to suffocation and elytra crash damage. Now obviously it says right click to turn on off. I right clicked it did nothing. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna assume it's just permanently on. Uh, but what we can do now, we can stick that in here. Let's go put the second one of these down in the basement. Or I guess the basement of the basement. The next thing I needed to build was the alchemical veil. But I had to test this one first. I need two fermented spider eyes and some ender apples. Do we have spider eyes? Right, one, two. There we go, two alchemical veils now. I said to test this one specifically because it was said to get rid of positive side effects. Or at least I was under the impression it might take away positive side effects. We can put the alchemical veil in the very top head slot there. Now it very specifically said immune to ailments and effects. Now, if I switch this out for my night vision helmet. Ah, I don't have my night vision. So it makes me, it, oh, no, hang on. I do have my night vision. But the skull's gone. Ah. So it does make you immune to positive effects as well as negative ones. To catch 22. And because my night vision, it kept holding my night vision at bay, I'm guessing it wore down the durability. If I do this, Wears down the durability. Right, well, I'm glad I wrote test first next to that one. We can, we can cut that one off the list. Uh denied. Right, uh, the next one that we were going to test was Braces of the Titans. So let's have a look at the crafting recipe for those. Uh, Braces of the Titans, here we go. Critical hit damage is doubled. Very easy to make, all things considered. Gimme and gimme. There we go. Right then, so next thing on the list, Arcane Relic. Very generic name. Arcane Relic. Here we go. <clears throat> Magic damage taken decreased by 50%. Ooh, that requires a heart container and a polished blackstone pressure plate. Bit weird, but not the weirdest thing we've ever made. What's a heart container? Oh my god. Okay. Plus one heart. I wonder how many of those you can spam. Diamond. Do they. Oh, they don't have any MC value either. Diamond, enchanted golden apple, cooked salmon, poisoned potato. Lily pad, rabbit stew, cake, and a block of emerald. Everything here has an EMC value except for the crystallized obsidian. So cooked salmon, do we have fish? Ooh. Hey, and it's a salmon. Brilliant. First one. And we've got an achievement for that. Fishy business. Catch a fish. Oh, 200 and whatever episodes. Never caught a single fish. That, that's, that's the drift away. How do we get nature essence? Nature seeds in farmland. And how do we how do we make nature seeds? Prosperity seeds with prudentium essence and nature agglomeratio. That's not that bad. Okay. Okay. Okay, we can do that. Right then, so the last thing we need is the crystallized obsidian, which requires a wither rose, obsidian, and the crystallized amber. Or chorus fruit crystallized amber and an emerald and half as much slime. Which is interesting, because that means I'm gonna have to sacrifice one of these stacks of crystallized amber in order to get the crystallized obsidian. Chorus fruit. Do we have chorus fruit? We do have quite a lot of chorus fruit, that's good. I'm gonna make as many of these heart canisters as I currently can, and that totals up to nine of them. Now, bearing in mind I need to save two, let's see what happens if I just use these. Absolutely nothing. Great, that did nothing. Uh, oh, hang on, no. Oh, there we go. 
That's what the yellow hearts are. They're cyclic. Oh, I can get myself overshield. I wonder if there's a limit to how many of these I can actually use. Right then, one relic, two relics. Brilliant. We are now uh, more resistant than we already were to magic damage. And if I was smart enough, I'd be able to tell how that interacted with uh, this set of magic resistance here. But because I'm not smart enough, I'm not going to do that. But I will say, I am ever so slightly concerned because there is a very small, very small chance that they cancel each other out. Oh, that one takes up a bracelet slot. Do we have a spare necklace slot? We do. Let's put this in the necklace slot and then we can put this in the bracelet slot. There we go. And that can go on this uh, part of the uh, display right here. Brilliant. Right then, we're not done, but I am for today. I've got to go. So we're going to finish this the next time I'm online, which for you is about to be in a couple of seconds, but for me is going to be days from now. So uh, yeah, I'll see you in the future. Oomph. Hey, we're back. So as you can tell from my hot bar, in between that last clip and this one, I actually went a little bit heart hungry. Uh, and they're now blue. Uh, I've gone up by about four extra rows of hearts, and they seem to be permanent, because uh, eating food seems to restore them back. And it took quite a lot of them. It didn't take a stack, but it took very nearly a stack. And I believe if we go down into the sub-basement, uh, I put the remaining hearts that I had left over down here. Yeah, there we are, 16 and 5, that's uh, 21. And 64 minus 21 is 43, which means it took me 43 clicks to get this many hearts. And since we only have 21, 43 minus 21, we get ourselves 22, which means technically speaking, we need to craft 22 more of those heart containers in order to get Ruby to the same amount of hearts that we're currently on. Right then, either way, while that's uh, solidifying, I guess, I was going to say cooking, but while that's solidifying, uh, what we can do, obviously we're going to need to uh, fill that tank at some point soon, uh, but we can move on to the next uh, trinket that we needed to make, which, if I just take a look at my sheet very quickly, is the Everlasting Rock Candy. So if we pull that up just now, Everlasting... Here we go, rock candy. This is actually pretty simple. Four golden apples, two chocolate apples, two cakes, and a ghast tier. And that makes us immune to damage and death via starvation. So let's see if we have everything we need already in the computer. And if not, well then let's see what we need. There we go, give us the nine chocolate apples apparently, that's pretty good. Let's burn a couple of them in there so that we can actually save the recipe. One and two, there we have it. Two everlasting rock candies. Now, this is very good, this has an EMC value which means I can actually chuck it up there. We didn't have to craft it twice and then I can take it back out. So, if I can hopefully there we go, apply this to myself. I can take the other one down into the basement. So, next on my list is just your standard speed charm. No fancy name here, no EMC value, and to make it, all we need is four sugar, three mason iron, and some crystallized amber, of which we still have quite the decent amount. Most unusual part of the speed charm is the mason iron, but even then the mason iron's pretty simple. You get two just from four blocks of regular iron. So as long as we can get enough blocks of regular iron, for example eight, that's enough for the four masonry iron. Oh wait, hang on a second, it also requires mason stone, which is cobbles, which is not just cobblestone, but mason cobblestone, which is cobblestone and gravel, which is really irritating, but either way, mason cobblestone, there we go. What does this look like? Oh, it's this block. Oh, I haven't seen that in years. One and two. There we go, just by having this in my inventory, I'm already faster now. Having more than one doesn't make me go any faster. Uh, this is a charm slot. Do I have any spare charm slots? There we go, plenty of charm slots, not used any yet. Brilliant, right then. Now that I've got this, I can drop it 
into the barrel. Although I am slightly concerned that it's going to wear out its durability before I actually get the chance to use it. Now, it's not letting me toggle to turn it off. See, it won't let me right click to turn off at all. So what I'm going to do, just to be safe, I'm going to stick it in this chest up here. This one's mine. And then I'm not going to take it back out until I've eternal stellar it. But moving on from that one to the next one, the last one, or I guess the second to last one, I can totally count, I pinky promise. But the second to last one that we're going to make is the Steel Rend Armlet of Resistance. Big old name. I don't remember what this one does. Steel Rend. Ah, makes us immune to knockback. I love that. All right then, so... That one's actually pretty simple, all things considered. It's just obsidian, amber, and diamonds. There we go, there's one, and then stick the other amber in here, and that becomes two. There we go, and that makes us immune to knockback. So, if we put this on here, starting to build up a severe armada of trinkets right here. And we can pop it in the barrel. So, the very last thing, and I mean the very last thing, on the list of trinkets that we need to make is the Wind Force Gauntlets. And they increase our attack speed. Assumably that means it, like, uh, speeds up the slowdown effect that you get each time you swing your sword. So, for example, if you look at the sword under my cursor, I can't actually swing again at full power until that sword is all the way back up. So again, assumably, that's what that does. It speeds that up. And for this, the only thing we're missing, surprisingly, is blue concrete powder, which, there we go, problem solved. Click this, click this, gimme. And I would say gimme again, but we're running low on blaze powder there, so let me just grab two more of those. And gimme again. And for some reason, this already took one hit of uh, durability, just from putting it in my inventory, but just to check, yes, it does indeed mean that we can swing quicker. It's still not quite as fast as uh, as fast as we would want. It's not instant, but it is certainly that one step up. So this goes in the hand slot. Uh, Braces of the Titans is hands. So if I take these out and put these in the hand slot, these ones can also go in the bracelet slot. And I believe we do have a, a, a second bracelet slot. Or is it just the one? That's the necklace slot. The ethereal circlet is a bracelet, but it's also a head. So if I take it out of the bracelet slot and put it in the head slot, I can then take the braces of the titans and put it in the bracelet slot. And now we're wearing all of them because... Oh, I love that. I, I, I just love it. It's brilliant. It's amazing. It's so needlessly powerful and broken, and I just love looking at it. With that sorted, we can just put this one in the barrel, along with all of the other trinkets that we crafted, and the only other thing that we need to do is get those spare hearts that we've set ticking over in the background while we've been doing all of this, and we'll be done with this section of the upgrades. There we go. Go! So, as long as my math is correct, that should now be the additional 22 heart containers that we needed to collect on top of the ones that we already had down here. So, if we just boop these on up, there we go, then we can shunt all these along. That should, in theory, be everything Ruby will need in order to become basically untouchable, just like I am now. So, on to the next thing. Or actually, you know what? Nah. You see, uh, it's been kind of hard to keep track of because my new recording style of, you know, recording for as many days as I want just to accomplish a goal, but we've actually done a lot, and I mean a lot in today's session. And because of that, I don't want to overload one video with too much stuff and then end up suffocating everything we've done by not giving it room to breathe. So I'm going to call the end of today's episode here because we have done a lot and uh, I mean a lot in terms of uh, improving our chances at beating the Ender Dragon. So yeah, let's close up this massive hole in the ground. And as we do that, we can do our outro. But yeah, so if you have liked today's video, make sure to leave a like down below to let me know that you've liked it. If you have anything you want to say about today's video, or me, or the channel in general, or the series in general, leave a comment. You know, that's kind of what the comment section is for. And if you enjoy me, my attitude, my builds, the series, or anything like that, and you want to stick around, make sure to subscribe. Please. That being said, though, in case I don't see you, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good night. And I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys.
Peace out. Mwah.